I read the 24th chapter of the 16th verse. It says, For a just man falls seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Father, we just want to thank you for your word because I know that your word is already blessed. I'm asking as I speak to your people, Father, you're not giving them what I want, but when I open my mouth, Father, give them what you want. You know exactly, Father, what they need on today. Let your word penetrate, God, out in the audience, Father God, and let someone get in and let someone have knowledge of your word, Father God. I ask you to lead me, God, and direct me, Father God, in your word. And when it's all said and done, you will give the glory. Amen. Briefly, I just want to give y'all, I want to kind of like give y'all this word as it came to me. Amen. And as I give y'all this word, amen. 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 The topic is, it won't be like this always. Amen. It won't be like this always. Amen. Great time. Okay. Amen. So, so have you ever fallen down spiritually right while running this race, been tripped up by the devil? Amen. So you're not a failure because you fall. Only if you don't get back up. If you get up just once more, then you fall. Then you're a successor. Amen. So that's what Proverbs 24 and 16 tells us where a just man falls seven times and rises up again. It says, but the wicked amen shall fall into his cheek. So, Peter did just that. He, amen. So, I, I want you to, amen, kind of look at yourself today as, as I teach this word, get it for you. I kind of want you to examine yourself today, amen, and see where you at. And, and I want to let you know that it won't be like this always in your life, amen. amen. So, Peter, amen, did just that and denied the Lord. But in spite of it all, God gave him a new start. And Peter learned, amen, how to fail forward, amen. So failing doesn't have to be a pigeon post, amen. It can be a God post, amen. We can learn from failure and sin. God had a way of bringing good out of that. Did y'all know that? God had a way of bringing good things out of that. Amen. amen. Some have low self-esteem and think God sees them as a, a uh, composite, amen, of all their failures, but not self. When God forgives, he forget and for it. Now, not to say there's no consequences, but from a judgment perspective, God doesn't hold them against you. Always know this. God does not hold whatever you do. He does not hold it against you. If we fail, God, it will probably be at a point of our greatest strength. Listen at this. If you fail, God, it's not in your week and be a, uh, in a, a time of your greatest strength. So, we don't think we are strong. When you feel like you're strong, you feel like there's no way in the world that I'm going to fail because I'm strong. But the Bible said when you think you're strong, that's when you're weak and that's when the devil can trip you up because you're strong at that point. You feel like you're strong and you feel like that amen, you, amen, cannot fail God because you feel like, well, I'm really strong and I'm not going to do anything wrong. You're so confident in not doing anything wrong because you feel like you're so strong in those areas. Everybody has a weak area in their life. Amen. Everybody does. From the pulpit to the door, we all have a type of weakness in our life. But if we don't have, if we're not covered by the blood of Jesus, amen, that that weakness that was, amen, that we thought that was covered will fester and it will come out. And if we let our guards down when we think we're really actually strong, you never let your guard down because there ain't nobody that strong. Amen. Amen. That's what the word of God says when you think you're strong, then that's when you're weak. And a lot of times, the reason why people, amen, they end up getting in certain things because, again, they think they're strong at their point, but they don't really realize that I really wasn't strong as I thought I was. Yes. So Peter's greatest strength was his courage. We criticize Peter for taking his eyes off the Lord on the Sea of Galilee and, and began to sink. But at least the, the, the word of God says, at least Peter got out of the boat. Amen. A lot of times people criticize Peter, amen. But at least, again, he did get out of the boat. So when they came to arrest Jesus, Peter pulled out his sword to defend him, 
tried to take off one of their hats. Amen. So Peter, at that time, that he didn't want anybody to mess with his Savior, so he did what he thought was best, but not knowing that that wasn't the right thing to do. So Peter felt like by protecting God, you know, a lot of times we do things we think is right, but that's not the way God see it. But Peter ain't even thought he was protecting God by cutting off one of the folks' ear. But y'all, as y'all know the story, God did not like that, right? Yes. So, and also an example in the Bible was Moses, amen. Moses, amen. The Bible said he was the meekest among men, meek with strength and under control. But what did he do? He lost control of his emotion and he killed an Egyptian. Later he smoked the rocks, amen. So Moses, amen, in the Bible was one of the ones that was really was strong, but he had some weak points, amen. So I want to tell you today that everybody sitting up in here today with some weak points, amen. amen. Abraham, you know about Abraham, amen. Abraham, he is called the father of faith, but he left Hannah and he went into Egypt and lied about Sarah. Y'all remember that? Yes. His wife? Because he didn't have enough faith that God would protect him. He fell in his era of strength. Well, he, was he was strong at the time, but he fell. Yeah. So also in another character in the Bible was David. A picture of purity, apple of the God's own life. Amen. God said David was a man after my own heart. Amen. But he committed adultery. He fell in his area of strength. And David probably thought at that time, too, that I was strong, you know, um, everything. He knew that um, he had failures, but David, there are some failures David didn't really realize that there are some things he probably thought that he wouldn't fail in, but he had failures. We all have failures, but the time that we think that we're strong, there's certain things we think we're really actually strong in, but we're really not that strong. But I need to be myself. There are some things that I think I'm really strong, but in, in reality, that I'm really not. We are weak in areas, amen? amen. But we cannot get so secure in ourselves that we feel that we won't fail. And I think that's what happened with the body of Christ, outside of the body of Christ, amen. We get so confident in ourselves and say, putting our trust and confidence in God, we rely on our own flesh. Yeah. But there's no good thing in the flesh. Amen. So we can't put our trust in flesh because flesh will fail you. Amen. amen. So none of these failures, none of these fell in their weakness, but all of them fell in their strength when they were strong. Every last one of them fell in their strength, amen. In their weakness, amen. When they go, I'm sorry, when they thought they were strong, that's when every last one of them fell. And unguarded strength is a double weakness. A lot of times, amen, that realize that an unguarded strength is a double weakness. Why? Because it's like, even me myself, amen, when I was first saved, amen, I thought I was so strong in God. Couldn't nobody tell me that I was not strong in God. Amen. You can get so, you can think you're so strong that you get unguarded. And that's when you will really fall because you're unguarded. You're thinking that everything's okay. And that's a double weakness. And that's when you'll hit rock bottom. You'll really fall. You'll really fail because why? You're, you're not guarded. Yeah. You know, sometimes we walk around and we think we're so saved. We think we're uh, holy, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And we walk around with our guards down. But that's even more so you should have your guards up. Never let your guards down when you think you're strong. Amen. Hold them up higher. Yeah. Guard yourself more with the blood of Jesus because yeah. that's when you will fall into temptation quicker than anything because you're thinking that you are okay. You're thinking that you're so secure in yeah. yourself. Yeah. A lot of times we're so secure in ourselves that we're not secure in God because we rely on self. Amen. This right here. This is what. Amen. Amen. So Paul says in 2 Corinthians, when I am weak, then I am strong. But then I'm dependent on the Lord and not myself. So Paul even says that don't depend on yourself. Amen? A lot of times we walk around and we depend on ourselves to get us out of, depend on ourselves. Amen? But that's when, you know, you got to say, God, I'm telling you right now, you know me, you made me, you know what kind of person that I am, you know what my weakness is, God, and I cannot. A lot of times we don't want to tell God that we want to think we're so strong, amen? We want to think, okay, God, I don't want to let you down. Okay, God, I can do this. But you got to realize that you can't do it without God. Amen. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Yeah. So you can't do nothing without God's help. 
We walk around here, we think that we can make, we think we can handle it. We depend on our own self to do certain things in life. But every last one of us is weak. Every last one of us in here has had some type of weakness. And if it's left on board, even if you're safe, if it's left on board, you will revert right back. Amen? Amen. You, you will revert right back to the same old weakness that you have been battling with ever since you was got to the certain age and know, know right from wrong. Everybody has that, that internal battle that they battle with some type of weakness that they have. Everybody don't have the same weakness. Some might be drinking, some might be women, some might be gambling, some might be smoking, some might be drugs. Whatever it is, you fill in the blank. But everybody has some type of weakness. But when people get saved, they need their self authority because they feel that, okay, well, I'm saved now, then I'm not going to do it anymore. But just because you're saved, don't sit there and say you're not going to do it anymore because you don't know what you're going to do. You, you have to pray daily on your weakness, amen? Yes. Because the devil looking for that little peephole so that he can open that door and you be right back doing the same thing that you got delivered from. You'll find yourself right back. Yes. But if you're going to fall, amen, fall, fall forward. Get yourself back up. Don't stay there because, amen, you can fell down. Get yourself back up, amen? Amen. 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 So we can admire Peter say that at first glance. But there is a difference between saying, I can do all things through Christ, or just, I can do all things. So when I say, I can do all things, I'm talking about me, myself. I can do all things. No, I can't. No, I can't. But I can do all things through Christ that what strengthens me. He's the one that strengthens me so I can do all things because without him, I can't do anything. How many of y'all sitting out there right now, y'all want to get out of a situation so bad, but you can't get out of it? Amen. Amen? Amen. You want to cut ties so bad, it's like, man, I, I want to leave this alone. I, I don't want to do this anymore, but I keep finding myself that I'm still doing it. But yet, I want to get out of it. It has a grip over me, on me, but I can't get out of it. But I'm, let me enlighten you. You're going to never get out of it as long as you keep depending on yourself to get out of it. Yeah. You will never get out of it. You will still be in that same situation until Jesus comes. So therefore, you got to ask God, Lord, I need you to help me yeah. to get out of this situation. Yeah. When you really get tired of being in something, you know what I mean, for a long time, yeah. you know, yeah. when you really get tired, when you hit rock bottom, then you will be tired enough that God, you know, God looks at that heart. He said, okay, you know, you're really tired now, so I'm going to help you get out of that situation. Why? Because you didn't, you tried to do it all these years yourself, but you couldn't do it. How many of you all have tried, amen, to do certain things, amen, whatever it is yourself, but you find yourself, you couldn't do it. Amen. 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 You could not do it yourself, but when you depend on God, then you're like, whoa, man. Oh, my God. Was it that easy? Yes, it was that easy. Why? Because you gave it to God. You gave it at home, and he worked that situation out for you, and he fixed that situation for you. Why? Because you gave it to him. You came to reality with the flesh and said, flesh, shut up. Flesh, you, you, you can't do nothing without God. So you came to reality to tell yourself that I can't do anything without God's help. So I need God in this. Yes. Amen? I cannot do this without God. Amen. So if I say I can do all things through Christ, that strength me I can't, amen. So the boastful man is tempted, the devil, amen, to tempt him. So boastful, boasting yourself, I can do it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I got it. You know, you're not, you're not good and you don't got it. You know, how, you know how people say in the world, you know, hey man, I got this, I got this man, I can have this man, I know what to do. You know, you don't. Because you got it, you won't keep saying you got it. Amen? Amen? amen. So if you got it, you will see some difference, amen? Praise God. So before we sin, the devil is a temper. After we sin, the devil is a, uh, he is an accuser. Amen. After we sin, before we sin, he says, "Go ahead. No one will know. You can get away with it." Isn't that what he always tells us? Yeah. He said, "Go ahead. You're fine. Don't nobody know. You can get away with it." Yeah. And he boosts you up. He boosts you up to do it. Amen. Amen. And afterward, he says, "After you do it, he said, you'll never get away with it." You blew it. Yeah. After he made everything look good, felt good, and after he got into it, whatever, whatever, and then you felt so good, and then after he did it, whatever, he said, 
you blew it. That's just like you, you blew it. You ain't gonna get away with it. You blew it. You you just sit there. You told you talked me into it. How many people talk you into stuff, and then once you got into it, hey man, after they talk you into doing, hey man, you shouldn't have did that, bro. You just you still should have did it. You're in trouble. You're in trouble, man. You're in trouble. You shouldn't have did it. You know, so that is exactly how the devil does. Once he gets you out there, once he gets you into something, he's like, you do it. Man, I didn't think you was going to do it. You, you know, you have so many people, hey, man, boosting you to do something, then after you do it, then all of them back up and said, well, I didn't think you were that stupid enough to do it. Yeah? Where, 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 is, where is your friends, where is your homies, and everybody, hey, amen, boost you up to do something, and then they all back back, and you standing by yourself, and the devil looking at you said, you blew it. And not only that, the devil used them to say, man, you blew it. You know, they're not going to say then that, you know, you shouldn't have did it. They're going to have to, they're going to talk you into it. Man, you blew it. You done messed up. You're getting in trouble now. Man, you, 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 on your, you on your own on this. Uh-uh. You on your own. And you have to all by yourself on your own, right? Amen? Amen. On your own because you blew it. Because you messed up. Amen? Because there's nobody there to help you. But I come to tell you that you do got some help. Amen. I come to tell you today, all your friends turn their back on you. All your friends want to walk away, but Jesus standing on the sidelines and come on, baby. I'm going to pull you out. And come on, I'm going to help you. They, amen, you blew it, amen. They talk you into it, but I'm going to help pull you out. Of it. Come on. Do I got a church up in here today? Amen. 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 And then they saying they come to you. All the ones, amen, that talk you into it. And all the ones, amen, that you fell down, amen. All the ones, amen, when you got up, they said, man, what happened? So let me tell you what happened. Jesus did it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. said, Jesus did it. Yeah, yeah. He pulled me out of it. He brought me out of it. Yeah. Amen. He delivered me from it. Amen. So I might fail down, but amen. When I fell down, I fell forward. I, I got back up and I went forward. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. If you fall down, amen, don't stay there. Amen. Just get back up and go forward. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah, amen. Uh, because God got an assignment for you, amen. Praise God. We fall out, amen, seven times, but we get back up again. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Satan's goal is not only for you to fall, but for you to stay down, amen. So let's learn how to fall forward, amen. Let's get back up. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. <laughs> No matter how many times you fall, get yourself back up. Amen. 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 Even when we fall, God is still sovereignty. Yeah. I love this God we serve, amen, that he is so sorry. Man. Oh, my God, he has so much love for him. Huh? What does sovereign mean, amen? It means he's still in control. Huh? He's still in control of your life. Huh? He's still in control of my life, amen. If I mess up, he's still in control. Come on, somebody. One thing, amen, Luke 22 and 60 told us about Peter. The rooster crowed, amen, is a testimony that God was still in control. The Lord shut the beast of the hundred of roosters until the precise moment of the third denier. Just think about all of the roosters. You know, in the morning, how the roosters, you hear them all of them crowing, right? Amen, praise God. Anybody, amen, praise God, heard roosters in the morning. We had some around here sometime, amen, sometimes you hear them out there, over there, with whatever, amen. But, amen, praise God, and sometimes they all at one time. Time, uh, but God, amen, wanted to uh, show uh, uh, Peter, amen, he shut all the rest of them up. And only that one, amen, did it three times, amen, praise God. But God was still in control. Uh, he was in control of the rooster. Huh? So God is in control of you. Huh? If he can shut every last one of them up, amen, uh, he can shut up what the devil is trying to do to you. Huh? He can destroy the devil, amen. Come on, somebody, uh, look at your name and say, get back up. Yeah. 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 Ha, ha, ha. Right now, Peter's at his worst boys falling, falling out of control. But he got a message from the Lord. I am still in control. I, I come to tell you today, amen, praise God. God is still in control of your life, amen. And we believe, amen, not yet he abides faithful. He's still faithful, amen, praise God. He's not going to leave you nor forsake you. He's not going to leave you out there down, amen, praise God. He's going to always be there to pick you back up. Oh. We often fail God, but he never fails us. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. You may not be faithful to him, but great is his faithfulness. Uh, hallelujah. I say great is his faithfulness. Uh, I am not so great, but how great is thou art. Uh, how great God is. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. To learn to 
to sell forward, we must remember that even when we despair and feel out of control, God is still in control, amen. He's still sovereign, amen. And Romans 8 and 20 says that all things work together for the good, amen. It's working out for your good, amen. Praise God. All of them times you failed, it worked out for your good. All of them times you thought you wasn't going to get up, it worked out for your good. God had always been in control, huh? And all your failures, God's still in control, huh? All your failures, amen, he's a sovereign God, huh? All your failures, amen, he's right back there to pick you back up, amen, huh? One thing, amen, about the people in the world, when we fall down, amen, huh? They want to talk about us, come on, somebody, huh? They want to bash our names, come on, somebody, huh? They want to look down on us, come on, somebody, huh? Amen, they don't know how to reach out a hand to pick us back up, amen, huh? Come on, somebody, huh? The word of God says you're going to reap what you sow, amen, huh? The same thing you criticize me with, amen. Man, that could be the very same thing that you fall into for this God. Huh? And you can want somebody to have mercy on you, amen. Huh? But just know that God is a sovereign God. Huh? Just know that he's going to pick you back up. Huh? Just know that he is a forgiving God. Huh? Come on, somebody. Huh? Amen. Praise God. You might be by yourself at times. Huh? You might be in your home. Huh? Or you might be in your bathroom. Huh? And you might say, I'm tired of this same sin. Huh? Look like I cannot get rid of this sin. Huh? Look like this sin is so attached to me. Huh? I don't like what I'm doing. Doing, uh, but people are criticizing me because of this sin. Uh, but they don't know inside of me uh, that I don't like what I'm doing. Uh, they don't know inside of me by myself uh, that I'm crying to God because uh, I don't like what I'm doing. Uh, they don't know how many times uh, that I fell on my knees because uh, I don't like what I'm doing. Uh, but they don't know, hallelujah, uh, but I come to tell you today uh, that God is in control. Uh, he see how many times uh, that you fell down. Uh, 